Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BB3D channel we'll learn how to install an anti-backlash nut on the Ender 3 series of 3D printers. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to stop the drop. What's the drop? It's that annoying tendency of the Z-axis on some 3D printers to succumb to the force of gravity and sink back toward the bed after it finishes a print, and it happens when the printer shuts off the Z-axis stepper motor. When you think about it, there is a lot of stuff the Z-axis motor has to hold up. It's got the brackets with the wheels, it's got the extruder stepper motor, and it's got the X-axis arm, and it's got the X-carriage and the nozzle and the fans. Now on some printers, the weight of all that stuff mounted on the Z-axis pressing down on the lead screw is enough to make the lead screw turn, and the motor, being unpowered, is uh, powerless to stop it. Now this isn't something that affects every printer. I've really only ever seen it happen on my printers that have a single Z-axis stepper motor and lead screw. And as you might expect, if you've added a few mods to the X-carriage, like multiple cooling fans, different ductwork, and the like, those mods can add just enough weight to make this happen. Although I've also seen it happen on a printer with a stock setup too. Now this is one of those little upgrades where if your printer doesn't have this problem, then you can skip it. But if your printer's Z-axis is falling down on the job after the job is done, this should put an end to it. And the this that I'm talking about is an anti-backlash nut. Backlash refers to the amount of play between the lead screw and the nut that runs through it to move the Z-axis. Lead screws and nuts have a certain amount of clearance between their threads so that they can move without binding, but due to differences in manufacturing, sometimes you end up with a combination of lead screw and nut that have a little bit too much clearance. This example shows backlash in gears, but the concept is the same with the nut and the lead screw. An anti-backlash nut is intended to increase precision by reducing backlash, and it does this by using a two-part nut, where the two halves are keyed so they can't spin independently of each other, but they can slide closer or farther apart. And those halves are pushed apart by a spring to pre-tension or pre-load them. The spring causes the nut to press against the threads on the screw in both the up and down directions. Like, it's left and right on this diagram, but, you know, turn it 90 degrees and then it's up and down. The weight of the Z-axis is always pressing that nut down onto the lead screw, so an anti-backlash nut probably isn't going to provide an increase in precision here. But an anti-backlash nut does what it does by doubling the surface area of the nut that's in contact with the lead screw, and that increases the friction in the system. Certainly not enough to cause the lead screw to bind, but definitely enough to keep the weight of the Z-axis from spinning the screw and dropping the nozzle to the bed like the Times Square ball on New Year's Eve. So we're using the anti-backlash nut for the side effects, not for its actual intended use. Okay, enough about that. On many 3D printers, the nut is round and has a four-hole mounting pattern. On a lot of Creality printers, the nut looks like it started out round, but then had the sides cut off and the whole pattern is different so you can't just grab a regular one and cut the sides off and mount it because the screw holes wouldn't line up with the bracket on the x-axis assembly. So you need to make sure that whichever anti-backlash nut you buy will fit your printer and the product listings will tell you. Now you can get these in either plastic or brass. I got these from Amazon but you can also get a nice brass one from TH3D Studio and they say they test fit the ones they sell to make sure that the two halves mate together correctly and work smoothly. The Amazon ones don't make that claim and I've gotten poorly made ones there before. Now that said, the two pack that I ordered for this video seem fine and of course links are in the description. Now I'm not sure when you'd want to use a plastic one versus a brass one, but my Ender 3 came with a brass nut, so I'm going to stick with brass. I'm going to be doing this on my Ender 3 and this works exactly the same on an Ender 3 Pro or an Ender 3 V2. As far as I can tell, these printers use the exact same bracket. So how do we go about installing this little engineering marvel? Well, it's actually pretty easy, and here's what we're going to need. You'll need the anti-backlash nut kit. You'll need a hex driver for the screws that secure the nut to the Z bracket. A hex driver to loosen and tighten the grub screw on the Z motor coupler. That's the cylindrical part that connects the lead screw to the motor. 
and a big zip tie or two. Now it doesn't have to be zip ties, it could be a loop of Velcro. This is just to hold the x-axis arm at the top of the z-axis while we work on things. Okay, we're starting with an empty printer, that is there's no filament loaded. Home the printer so the z-axis is at its lowest position. Turn the printer off and unplug it. Loosen the grub screw that secures the lead screw in the Z motor coupler so that the lead screw can be lifted out. With the lead screw loose, unscrew it from the existing brass nut and set the lead screw aside. Now that the X axis is free to move about the cabin, bring it up to the top and use zip ties or Velcro or something to keep it there. Remove the two screws securing the existing brass nut to the bracket. The screws have lock washers with them on the top and the bottom of the bracket, so watch out and don't lose them. Secure the top half of the new anti-backlash nut to the bracket using the screws from the original nut. It can be a little tricky to get the lock washers between the bracket and the nut to stay in place, so take your time. Put the spring over the bottom half of the anti-backlash nut. Press the two halves of the anti-backlash nut together, aligning the tabs and compressing the spring. While holding that assembly together, screw the lead screw into the anti-backlash nut from the top. Now this is sometimes easier said than done, and if you're having trouble, set the spring in the bottom half of the anti-backlash nut aside, get the lead screw started in the top part of it, and then bring the spring and the bottom back into play. Once the lead screw exits the bottom part of the anti-backlash nut, you can let go of the nut. Continue feeding the screw into the anti-backlash nut until you've got about 10 centimeters of it protruding from the bottom. That's about 4 inches. Remove the zip ties or whatever you're using to hold the x-axis arm at the top of the printer and lower the arm down until you've got the lead screw seated in the Z motor coupler. And make sure that it's fully seated. Tighten the grub screw to secure the lead screw into the coupler and make sure that the lead screw can't turn when the coupler is held still. Last step, congratulate yourself on a job well done. Hey Brian, yeah Brian, good job. Thanks, ah, don't mention it. So like I said, this was reasonably easy to do. Just remove the old stock nut, put in the anti-backlash nut and it's done. And the best part is, now the nozzle doesn't drop to the bed at the slightest provocation. See, nothing moves. Now again, links for the parts are in the description, so if you need to pick up an anti-backlash nut or two, look in there. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's print until we drop. Oh, wait. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.